Hi, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Meeple University on the Dutch Tower. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Bone to Pick, game designed by Yusef Chieke and published by Lycan Studio. We are using a prototype copy of the game and so the rules and components may not be final. Let's get to the table. Bone to Pick is a game of cooperative battle but personal glory. The players will face a number of undead monsters and will simultaneously choose weapons and reveal them in order to attempt to fight those monsters. If they succeed, the winner gets the trophy and whoever gets the most trophies across the game is the winner. But if they fail enough times and their safe haven is destroyed, then whichever player has put in the least effort across the game is singled out as the scapegoat and ultimate loser. To set up for the basic single round version of the game, give each player a player board and then the 12 basic weapons matching their colour. These will be two zeros and then all numbers ranging from 1 to 10. These cards are held secretly in the player's hand. Then shuffle up all of the undead cards, or if you want an easier game, leave the 10 purple hard cards out. Then deal 10 cards off the top of the deck and place them in the centre of the table, face down. The Campaign, Legend, Scapegoat and Upgrade cards are set aside for now as these are only used in the full four round game. You're now ready to play. A round of Bone to Pick plays in 10 turns and each turn begins by flipping face up the next undead card and checking its strength, which is this number on the right and depends on your player count. Then in the prepare phase, players will openly discuss how they're going to defeat this undead and ultimately each player will play one weapon card face down onto the table. Players may say whatever they wish during the negotiations and are allowed to lie or play cards they said they weren't going to. Third comes the attack phase in which all of the played weapon cards are flipped face up and then their weapon values are added together and compared with the power value for the current undead at your player count. Here, the sum of the weapons is 23, which is equal to or higher than the 15 required to defeat this undead at four players. If the sum is less than the power required, then the undead wins the battle. Then you will resolve the outcome. If you won the battle, then the player who played the highest weapon card gets to keep the undead card in their collection. This will score them trophy points based on what's shown in the top left corner. If two or more players tie for the highest weapon, then they cancel each other out for the purposes of the trophies, and the trophy ultimately goes to the highest unique weapon in the collection. If zero is the highest unique, or there are no unique weapons, then no player gains the trophy and it's simply removed. Any earned trophies are placed into the trophy space of the player's player board. If the players did not play enough weapons to defeat the undead, then not only does no player get the trophy, but your haven has taken damage. Slip the undead card sideways under the deck so that you can see the hearts in the bottom left corner of the card. If across the course of the entire round there are ever three or more damage done to the haven, then the players immediately lose and start looking for the scapegoat. Whether you defeated or failed to defeat the undead, each player takes back their cards and discards them face down into their discard pile. You'll then proceed to the next turn, revealing a new undead, and each player will have in their hand only those cards that haven't already been played earlier in the round. In this way, your choice of weapon will reduce as the game goes on. The round can end in one of two ways. Either after the 10th turn, when the undead is defeated and the haven does not yet have three or more hits, or it ends immediately in failure if the haven ever has three or more hits. If the round ended in success, then all players total up the total value of the trophies they've collected, as well as the values of the two weapons that they've not played. Here the player's score is 24. Whichever player has the highest score is the legend and the winner of the round, and in the event of a tie, whoever defeated more total undeads is the winner. If still tied, victory is shared. In this way, when the team is successful, you want to earn as many trophies as possible, as well as keep your highest weapons in stock. 
However, if the round ended in failure, then your trophies become irrelevant. All players add up the total number remaining on unplayed weapons, and whoever has the highest value, that is whoever has contributed the least, is made the scapegoat and is the ultimate loser of the round. If tied, whoever has the single highest valued weapon remaining is the loser, and if still tied, both players suffer the indignity of being the scapegoat. The game may also be played as a four round campaign with points and upgrades carrying over between rounds. To set up, you'll lay out the campaign rounds and you may choose the easy or hard modes for each. The card will show you which 10 sorts of undead cards to mix together to form your undead deck and will tell you how many hit points the Haven has before the round is failed. The first round is set up and played exactly as the base game, and at the end of the round, if successful, the winner will receive the legend card, and if it's failed, then the loser receives the scapegoat card. This shows you the number of campaign victory points won or lost for this round. In the event of an unbreakable tie, no player receives these points. Next, all trophy cards that the player has collected during the round are flipped face down and placed into the undeads pile, and this will be worth end of campaign victory points. Then each player draws two cards from the black colored upgrade deck, looks at them, chooses one to add to their hand and discards the other. The player must then discard back down to 12 cards by removing any one card from their hand. Some of the upgraded weapons allow for extreme power, special game breaking bonuses, or end of campaign victory points. Some of these special powers also combo off the colored shield here, and this is the only function for that shield in the game. If you were the legend in this round, then instead you get to draw three upgrade cards and keep two, while if you were the scapegoat, you get no upgrades at all. If there was a tie for legend or scapegoat, even though you don't get the card, you still get the upgrade, bonus or penalty. After all four rounds have been played, your final campaign score is added up by scoring one point for each undead trophy card that you've collected, the points showing on all of your upgraded weapons, and the points and penalties on any of your legend and scapegoat cards. The player with the highest score wins, and in the event of a tie, whoever has the most undead cards wins, if still tied, whoever has the most recent legend card is the winner, and if still tied, victory is shared. With a second copy of Bone to Pick, there is also an epic 7 to 12 player version of the game which can be played. And that's how to play Bone to Pick. We hope you enjoyed this video. When we film this video, Bone to Pick is going to Kickstarter, so we'll put the link in the description below when it is live, so you can check it out. If you find this video useful somehow, please help us by hitting that like button and subscribe to the Dice Tower if you haven't already done so. And if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please leave them in the comment section below. Until next time!